When I think of Kinsler's poems, I think of a man trying to find the language to adjust to mid 20th century life. There was an extraordinary rigor. There was an absolute universality about his work. For me, I think um, one of the most important things about Kinsella's work is that it is cumulative. So over decades, meanings accumulate in his work. He had a, a kind of uh, tone of voice that I recognized as a city tone. He was able to write about city things and he was intellectual and this excited me enormously. His upbringing uh, in inner city Dublin, drawing upon it as a source of, of uh, inspiration and a chronicler of that world. His early great poem, Nightwalker, 1968. The transition of Dublin from being an imperial city to being a national city. That tension inside the poem, uh, it, it's very, very powerfully done. The importance of being published in Ireland was key for Kinsella. Some of his earliest translations come through um, Dominant Press. The most famous one, of course, is the Thornbo Coolinga. It was an amazing achievement. It really opened up that work. Seamus Heaney, I think, has said that uh, it was a re-education of Irish poetry, or words to that effect. It directed our eyes back to the Irish. That was his, its brilliance. He wrote a couple of great poems in which he imaginatively engages with the darker side of America. Particularly I'm talking about his John F. Kennedy memorial poem, The Good Fight. You have this incredible blending of the personal loneliness with the larger political theme. He doesn't shy away from the less palatable aspects of Irish culture and Irish politics, and he names them as he sees them. It was in 1972, Bloody Sunday happened, and the poem Butcher's Dozen appeared in a small little pamphlet. It was passed around like Samistat, around um, the little cohort of friends. As an actual act of poetic integrity, I thought Butcher's Dozen was an important game changer in a way. To write a poem about being together with somebody over 20, 30, 40 years is an, almost another art. And I think he's one of the rare people who has managed throughout his life to produce a sequence of love poems that trace the progress of love. I was on my own, fumbling at the neglect in my cell, up under the roof over Baggett Street. There's one beautiful poem, it's called The Familiar. It really hits me every time I read it. Her knock at the door, her face bold on the landing. I brought you a present. I lifted in her case. It was light, but I could tell she was going to stay. And there was music in him. Quite an austere music, as well as the early lyrical music. And I suppose it's that wonderful austerity that I really admire in him. That inquiry that great art engages with is always open, you know, it's never concluded. And we see this in Kinsella's work where he returns to earlier poems and changes them sometimes in later publication. He can move from dealing with architectural issues to dealing with something which is so, so challenging and uncertain and uh, the self. He can move between the town big mythological sequence of poems to the minute understanding of the autobiographical self in Phoenix Street. I mean, that's a big achievement. I don't think we'll see the like of it again.